Hi everyone, we are super excited to present Spade and Spoon online. Uh, we're hoping to share some cooking videos, some tips and some recipes that you can be making at home um, and also some gardening things and things that are happening around school. Um, today I thought it'd be really important to start off with some basic kitchen safety and some knife skills, just a little refresher. I know that you guys are um, pretty good at cutting at the moment, but we've um, had a few weeks off from school and it's good to revisit our skills. Uh, it's really important that when you are cooking at home that you have the permission of um, a guardian, an adult or um, you know, a teenager supervising you, watching you, making sure that, um, that you're safe in the kitchen. Uh, particularly if you're using uh, the stove or the oven um, and even the microwave, it's always good to double check and get permission first. Okay, and uh, today I'm going to be joined by my little helper, um, Mila, who likes cooking as well. Come on in, Moo, come around here. Um, and if you're a little bit short, our first little bit of safety is it's good to have a stool or a, um, a sturdy chair to stand on so that you're, um, you can see what you're doing. All right. Say hi, Mila. <laughs> okay. Um, so you will notice that both Mila and myself, we've got our hair tied up, we've got our aprons on, and we've washed our hands. So I'm not going to show you guys how to wash your hands. You should be um, doing that lots at the moment anyway, but lots of hot soapy water um, and making sure you're keeping everything nice and clean. So um, on my chopping board here, I've got some different ingredients and um, three different knives. So it's really important about choosing the right knife for the job. Okay. Um, so what I might do is just angle the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. A little bit better. I might... Okay. So the three knives I've chosen today, I've got my chef's knife. Okay. Which is a, um, a big blade. I've got a paring knife and I've got a little serrated knife. So these, um, these are safety knives. Uh, they're really good for um, younger kids using them. You can't you you can't cut yourself on them, um, but you can still cut quite um, heavy vegetables. You can cut through apples and carrots and things. Um, does require a bit of effort, but um, you can get through those. So if you've got a little kid who likes cooking, um, I'll chuck a link down the bottom here with where I got these from. But these are a great knife to have around. So I've got um, today. I've got an apple. Just rated what we've got at home. Apple, I've got some herbs here, some mint, I've got some grapes, and I've got some pumpkin. So if I um, was going to start by chopping up the grapes, I wouldn't use my biggest knife for such a tiny little thing, okay? Because I'm likely to kind of slip and cut myself. I'd be better off using a paring knife, which is designed for fruits and veggies, okay? Small ones, all right? So I'm going to show you the bridge today. So the bridge is you use, if you've got a bigger thing, you'd use all of your fingers and thumbs like this to make a bridge, okay? Because we've just got little grapes. I'm just going to use my um, one finger and one thumb. Okay, I'll do this one move and you can do the next one. Okay, so you just put your knife in the middle there, okay? And you cut down, all right? That's the bridge. All right, I'll show you on the side here as well. So making the bridge with your fingers and slice through the middle, okay? Millie, do you want to show that one? You can use this knife, that's fine. So using your bridge, perfect. Okay, we'll do one more. Bridge, great. Okay. Um, how to chop through pumpkin. Okay, so I would recommend getting a grown up to cut the pumpkin into smaller manageable pieces because even for an adult cutting pumpkin, is quite a challenge. Um, I always make sure that when I am cutting things, I put it on its flat surface, okay? If you put it this way, it can roll around and that's going to be quite dangerous to cut. So put it flat surface down, okay? Um, so the good thing about a bigger blade is that it's got this flat surface on top. So you can put your hand on top here and that way your fingers are out of the way and you can't cut yourself. And you can also apply, just move your hands out of the way, please, Mila. You can also apply your body weight to help you chop through harder things, so like apples, carrots, and pumpkin and potatoes that are quite firm. You can push down on them, okay? So I'm going to remove a little bit of the skin, okay? I'm just going to slice around. And I can, to get through this harder bit, put my hand up the top here, okay? And push down like that. Okay, same thing on this side. This way I'm at no danger, even though I'm using a big knife, 
Um, there's no way I can cut myself on my hands so up the top. Okay, so I don't get all the skin off this side. Okay, I can flip the pumpkin around and go from that side. Okay, then I'm going to remove the C's inside. So what I like to do, rather than using a big knife, which is kind of awkward, I'd probably swap back over to my paring knife. Okay, because this is good for little um, fiddly jobs. And I would cut around, tucking my fingers out of the way. Okay, cut inside here. A bit awkward because I'm trying to, trying to do it so I can show you guys. Okay, like that. And then I can just pull the insides out with my hands. It comes away pretty easily. Okay, so now I've got my little wedge of pumpkin here. And that was pretty easy. So then to cut, to cut this pumpkin, I want to use my spider grip. So this is the spider grip, okay? You can see that my fingers are tucked behind my knuckles and my thumb is tucked in. Lots of people like to do the spider grip like this, but um, if I was cutting something, I could cut my th thumb. So I need to make sure that that's tucked right away, all right? So when I'm cutting this, I'm starting, and I kind of use my thumb to help stop the fruit and veggies from moving around, okay? So just move your fingers, please, Mila. Okay, chopping little chunks, okay, like this. If I was still finding this hard to chop through, I could put my hand up the top here and push down like that, okay? And have a go. Yeah. All right, so standing up. Okay, so tucking, going the right hand. Yep. So tucking your thumb out of the way, that's it. And push down. That's it, put your hand up the top, perfect. Great. Apples, so apples are a hard fruit to cut through. So same thing, I line it up with my bridge, okay, to get it into position, all right. Then, once I'm happy with where it is, I wanna move my hands out of the way because there is a chance if this apple, if the knife slips, that it could slip and cut me on my finger and thumb. So I like to line it up into position so my knife stuck just into sort of the start of the knife. And then I put my hand up the top and I push down, okay, like this. All right, so um, now I've got my two halves, so same thing, you can either then swap to your paring knife or you could still use your big knife if you wanted to chop it in half. Okay, so same thing. Okay, uh, you can also use um, your safety knife to cut through the apple. Mila, do you wanna show how that one works? So same thing, use your bridge, that's it. In the sawing action. Perfect. So um, even though it's uh, can't cut you, you can certainly cut through apples with a little bit of um, effort. Uh, another thing I like to use my big knife for is chopping up herbs um, and leafy greens. Okay, and we call this move the rock and chop. Okay, so I like to put my um, hand up the top, okay, and it's this rocking and chopping motion like this. Okay, so this is really good for when you're trying to um, crush crush um, garlic, okay, and you want it nice and fine. Um, chopping up chilies, garlic, ginger, leafy greens as well. This is the rock and chop, and it's quite a fun one to do. You want to have a go? So like that sort of action. Right, perfect. That's it. That one's pretty easy. It's about if you do have an accident in the kitchen, if you cut or burn yourself, what to do. If you cut yourself, make sure that you apply pressure um, using paper towel, tea towel, dishcloth, whatever you've got handy. Apply pressure to the cut, take a seat and let a grown-up know and they can come and assess it. Hopefully just needs a band-aid and then you're back in the kitchen. If you burn yourself, the best thing to do is to run your burn under cold water for five to ten minutes um, and then let a grown-up know as well so they can take a look at it. To cap on our knife skills, I want you to be practicing at home. We've got the bridge, okay, where you're making this with your hand. You've got the spider grip, okay. You'd be chopping things like this and the rock and chop. Okay, those are the three things I would like you to be practicing ready for next week with our first cooking lesson. Okay, bye.